so picking up where we left last time off at the four of you are in this street surrounded by virtual wolves oh yeah we are surrounded and uh well the uh the, the fight down the road has um given rise to well dust as a good section of this city is well very rapidly demolished the dust doesn't take too long to clear i mean any longer than a dust cloud the size of you know a small building <laughs> takes to clear they were buildings at one point yes not anymore what you see down there is well the horde of other werewolves trying to show up figuring out what's going on and father wolf is well on all fours sort of still hunched over in the rubble but the fighting is noticeably uh, stopped because presumably he's not fighting anything because he's still at the moment Very short I should sit up <laughs> before someone stabs you for my posture so very shortly after the fighting dies down the engine of the helicopter can be heard as it kind of crests the horizon again and does another pass by <clears throat> it circles but there's not much that ground folk can do to it and it seems to to recognize this because it does, has no qualms circling the uh the wreckage of the city where father wolf's little uh scuffle happened at it is staying quite high up but it is circling At this point, does anyone want to do anything, or shall narrative continue? I mean, Vetus right now is just trying not to get eaten or shot, so uh, he's <laughs> actually staying pretty remarkably still. You'd think he was a corpse. Well. <laughs> no, who would think that? And it, for once in his head, he's just praying Stall doesn't try to electroshock the helicopter. Do it. Don't do it, Stall. Um, excuse me, can I electroshock the uh, helicopter, please? I don't think you have the range to electroshock that. I don't think so, no. <laughs> I mean, he did shock somebody off, like, up high on a building. No? Yes, but the helicopter kind of goes above the buildings. Depends on how high the building was. <laughs> Can I scale the building to shoot a lightning bolt at the helicopter? <laughs> Somebody grab him. I'm, I'm not. The, the Urshel wolves? Why are you doing this? I'm not serious, <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, I'm j I have to ask because it sounds like something I would do, so I have to clarify. Okay. So. The helicopter does a few passes before it eventually waves back off and starts flying back the same way it came. You can see just the distant mountain that kind of surrounded this city, but what direction it is, who knows. And unfortunately, the person that just walked away. <laughs> yeah, he's back. All right, he's back. So we're going to do a bit of an unorthodox jump. We're jumping to Tolus. All right. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Forgot about him. <laughs> I hadn't. <laughs> so Tolus has armed himself 
and it re-entered the city. Yes. Upon recrossing the, the the cave and getting back into the city, the helicopter is apparent to you too. It's kind of hard to miss. In addition, the other thing that is quite hard to miss is the army assembling. What type of army? Are we talking about the robot army or? Robot, yes. Um, just from where you are, you can see hundreds of infantry essentially forming up you know, rank and file marching orders. As well as, well, Toll essentially saw him before. Three of the the large mechs, essentially. The, put, to put it the easiest way, forming up behind their infantry. What direction are they facing? Where does it seem? The mountain. It looks like they're leaving the city. I mean. Realistically, they're not engaged in combat, and if they're leaving the city, then they're not... To the best of his knowledge, his father isn't outside the city, so... Realistically, that's not his concern. Let them do what they want to do. Fair enough. So, is there any particular direction you're walking, or just trying to retrace footsteps? Well... Realistically, he is looking for the owner of the giant legs that he saw past the RV. Uh, because that would be a relatively decent direction to head. <laughs> it would be difficult to see from street level. You could guess just by the size of the the creature you could probably see find them easier if you've got an elevated view but down on street level it'd be it'd be hard to see there's just buildings blocking the line of sight well realistically uh you stated that this is a sandy type area i would assume i would see footprints cloud of dust cloud of dust something Normally, I'd say give me like a survival because it's not all just sand. There is still like asphalt and whatnot, but it is also Father Wolf, and you're looking for tracks the size of you know SUVs. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, no, fair enough. Following those tracks, and he's booking straight. You know, obviously, if. If he senses that he's going to be engaged by those robots because they're not too fond of him, uh, he'll obviously take more evasive measures, but unless they actually move to intercept, he's just booking it. Fair enough. It's a little bit of following this trail. The, the helicopter does essentially fly over you, heading outside the city. And I mean, Tullus is a military guy. It's sure. not like any kind of helicopter you've seen. I mean, realistically, he doesn't have any weaponry that could even harm yeah, a helicopter, he... even if he wanted to. <laughs> He's got small arms. <laughs> yeah, you got a dream? <laughs> <laughs> not involving this. All right. So, while Tallis continues his trek, we'll jump back to the RV. So, Rose, Cherry, and Titania. Some time has passed since the the wolves have run ran past, and Tallis left after them. Not a whole lot has happened since then. 
The helicopter does fly over the RV. It's not hard to, not hard to hear. And it's heading further out mm. up into the, the more plains area, roughly the direction you came. Very shortly after the helicopter flies over, the uh, the crumbling of rock is um, hurt. Peeking outside the the windows towards the cave that you came out of and through, essentially, there are quite a number of the robot individuals. fiddling in the dirt with some boxes. A number of them are using essentially just metal pipes, scraps, any large metal object they can to try to crack through some bits of the rock in the cave. So they're trying to block the entrance, or what are they doing? Looks like they're digging more than blocking. Mm -hmm. so, oh, so they're trying to open it up more. Maybe to get... Maybe to get... Maybe vehicles through. Hmm. If they're in that area, that might... That might at some that might cause a confrontation. Should should we should we just leave? I doubt that it is a good idea to stay within the area. Terrible. It's just no. I guess she's gonna. I do not know how to, how to directly avoid a confrontation here, however, maybe at some level, at some level useful to attempt to talk, attempt to talk to those, to those, those, those working through the entrance. Titania kind of <clears throat> begins to speak a little slowly. Um, you've already built up a little bit of goodwill with these people. I don't see why they would be openly hostile, at least to you or Rose. Um, me, well, it depends on if they know exactly what I am, or suspect what I am. But I do not foresee them being openly hostile to you. I mean, you're I the am. one that repaired the device for them. I, I agree, however, I'm slightly worried that if they remain in the area, they... They may end up in a confrontation with Vetus if he, tr or Vetus or Drew, if they attempt to leave. I. The thing is, is I don't think they're going to stay, for, a. Any real amount of time, if I were to guess, following my brother's military jargon that. He likes to spew. Likely that helicopter is scouting out an area they wish to go, and they're going to be following it relatively shortly. Likely. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a worrisome development, but likely not one we need to interfere with. Well... <clears throat> As for interfering, I'm not entirely sure, but if I were to place any sort of money down on this, that helicop the helicopter's going towards the city, in which case people will die, both kindred and human, because most definitely they're going to execute any sort of blood but blood dolls that they have 
Indeed, though. Yes. I do not have a true answer for what to do at this point. For what to do at this point. Unfortunately, when... between the three of us, there's not much we can do against an army unless you think you can talk them down, which I don't think is going to be um, conducive. I do not. I do not believe I have. I do not believe I. I do not believe I. Am, I do not believe I have the persuasive abilities to do to do such a thing. And if they even suspect what I am, they're not going to give me the time of day to speak. Indeed. So at this point, the uh, the individuals working at the tunnel entrance uh, return through the tunnel and disappear out of sight. Even from here, you could just, it's a distance, but you can see there's, there's crates left behind boxes. Mm -hmm. A number of them sort of pushed into little rocky outcroppings that they broke through. If I was if I was, if I was to make an unsubstantiated guess, I would assume those were explosives. Agreed. Looks like they might try to cave in this place to make sure nobody gets out. Perhaps, though I do not know why they, why they would take that why they would make that decision. <clears throat> so does anyone well, I suppose anyone either of you two want to have either of those characters do anything in the immediate couple minutes uh, Cherry's gonna Cherry's going to look Look, Cherry is going to examine in it from a distance. He's gonna like get out of the car and get out of the car and look at it from a somewhat distance. Does it look like? Does it look like this, these explosives are intended to are intended to open the are intended to open up what open up the thing, or does it more look like they're intending to create a cave in? I can tell you this much. You don't need this many explosives to cave in something. Okay. There. I mean, even just getting a bit of a distance, assuming they're explosives, assuming they're like C4. You don't need this much C4. Mm. Okay. Cherry's gonna get back in the RV. Hold on, I wanna. Ch Where is it? Hold up. Okay, no, that won't do anything. Never mind. Yeah, Titania, honestly, is not a fighter, and from previous discussions with these things, she feels like they're they already know what she is, so she's realistically not gonna waste the energy trying to talk to them. Yeah. And she, Cherry is like Cherry. <laughs> Cherry has a proc. Cherry um is very bad at talking to people, actually. So she's, I guess, I guess she's not gonna do anything directly because there isn't much visible. Because there isn't because like going towards it, the only solving that would might cause is it. Either she gets blown up or she stops the explosion, which she doesn't even know if it's necessarily something she wants to do. So I'm gonna ask, who has the keys to this RV? <sighs> who would be carrying these? Because 
Tolus and Stahl stole it. But mm. then Tolus was driving. It would be Tolus, I mean. So they would know how to hotwire an RV. <laughs> uh, cherry, cherry, wood. <laughs> because the first string of blasts go off. It didn't sound... It, this wasn't the main detonation. Judging by the fact a lot of the ordinates is left undetonated. Mm -hmm. But even the preemptive blast has sent a lot of rock falling. The RV is fine for now. Hold on. <laughs> Um, so what kind? So what kind of role would you say it is to hotwire an RV? Definitely larceny. Probably wits. Yeah, wits or dex. It's probably, probably wits larceny. Yeah. I would assume it would be craft something, but okay. Larceny has to do with stealing. Hotwiring is a form well, of stealing a car. So true. Yeah, but, but if you are larceny is more if, larceny more. I assume involves like sleight of hand and things. If like well, no, larceny is specifically committing crimes, whether that's lockpicking or uh, pickpocketing or hot wiring a car. However, an argument could be made for crafts, as in a mechanic yeah. would absolutely know how to hot wire a car, and that is a craft, not a theft. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, honestly, you could probably make an argument for just drive, but. Yeah, that too. Hmm. One of those accept, multiple uh, skills work. Yeah, I'll accept the wits larceny, wits drive, wits crafts, whatever. I mean, I know what you're gonna choose because one of them is a mental <laughs> yeah. skill, but. Uh. <laughs> okay, so wits crafts, like a plus five on this because I need to. But then I got route. So. But. Submit? What? I think a mistake was that. Oh wait, hold on. I actually need this. You need the other one in there. That. How? Wrote. Huh? Oh, wrote. That's how. Yeah, that's wrote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and realistically, no you wouldn't have taken a negative three on crafts, would no, you? Um, I added. I added. I added a plus. I added three extra to the modifiers. Okay. To offset that. The engine starts. Um, Time to go. Cherry has some drive, so Cherry's gonna start kinda of driving kinda of driving away to not get not get avalanched. And at, as soon as Cherry starts uh, pulling away, Titania is going to attempt to ring up um, Tallis. All right. He is getting a conversation with himself. Yeah. Does Tallis answer the phone? Yes, he does, actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> Since he is just moving forward. I mean, very shortly before Tallis gets this call, he can hear, probably hear the echoes of the explosions. Yeah. And honestly, this uh, conversation between Tolis and Titania is just Titania relaying that they're trying to bring down the mountain, it seems. And that they're having to move the RV. Get up on arms, run away. So, as the RV is gaining distance, second and probably primary ordinance goes off. <laughs> this mountain crumbles. You're left with... Well... As much as I hate using dust storms, you know, dust clouds, to kind of describe the aftermath of things, it seems to be a very common thing here. That's a lot of dust. Yeah, but... When it does start to clear, this mountain has been essentially split in two. 
Wow. And the skyline of the city can be seen on the other side. That's a that's a rail that that was like a railroad load level explosions then. God. Um at this point Titania goes now she kind of looks over at Cherry as uh, Cherry's driving, and she goes, Well, they've made a lovely path for that giant robot now, haven't they? I suppose, yes. So, jumping back to the other four. The helicopter has just waved off a little bit ago. The wolves around you are still quite on edge. But Father Wolf does sort of stand back up from his... What? <laughs> All fours. I don't know what the, the position would be called. Natural woven position. <laughs> Crouched over. I don't know. But he stands back up. Does a quick look around. You know, a bit of a, a very distinctive just sniffing of the air. Before simply giving a giving a, a low howl to the rest of his little pack here. And he takes back off. The same way he came, or...? Roughly, yes. Until these, um... Giant wolves begin to move, Vetus is still... Just watching. Not moving. After Father Wolf starts to, to take off, the rest of the Urshel wolves are kind of looking at each other, wondering if, you know, what, do we do, do we follow him or are we still standing here? Um, another howl comes back, echoing through the streets. And some of the wolves start to take off. One drops back out of Garu, not Garu, Urshel, back into Heishu. Young man, not much older than 20. And turns and is just... Okay, the hunt continues. Um... somewhat successful uh you're not dying today so congratulations it's always a good <laughs> good thing the, the helions that... are not quite as twitchy anymore um wish you the best of luck is he kind of unsure of what he's even saying at this point as he drops back into Urshel very shortly after and takes back off after the rest of his group. As the last one makes its way, Vetus is going to slowly begin to stand and dust off his suit. Kind of like a feeble attempt, honestly, at this point. <laughs> Whew, well, that was, uh, that was something. It's not very often you get to be in the presence of one of the old gods. I think that's a first for me. Yeah, that's definitely a first for me. I'd like to not have it happen again <laughs> myself. Unfortunately, if all of these are 
similar issues. I have a feeling each time we go to one of these places, we're going to find something that could realistically call itself a god. He just kind of I mean, shakes his head, disgusted. We still need to find the damn anchor. We still haven't done what, what it was that we came here to do originally. Yeah, those uh, demons really did not tell us what we were looking for, so we really have no idea what the hell we're looking for here. For all we know, we could have just given it to the gigantic wolf thing. It's possible. So, if I could ask everyone to give me a perception check real quick. Yeah. One. Two. Let me get a three. Yeah. Four. Come on, four. Oh. Stall. Oh. Oh. oh, you're doubled up. Why are you doubled? Oh, he's in roll 20. I'm just going to mute him. All right. So, not actually hard to see for really anyone here. The horizon. It almost looks like dawn. Oh. Oh. There's oh, the iris. Guy. <laughs> oh, look. The sun is rising. It was a long time it was night. <laughs> I guess that bell is over. We broke the spell. Congratulations, you guys. It's returning to normal. You can see nothing but concern on Vetus's <laughs> face at this very moment. Is he getting hit with day sleep? No. No. Okay. He waits for a second and he actually mutters, no day sleep. Um, this may not be good, guys, for me. You oh. can, you can you, see. You did say sun was bad for you, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Vetus uh, does kind of look. Just anything to break, essentially direct exposure. <laughs> Nearby building that's not crumbled. <laughs> yeah, there there are buildings that are still standing. Don't worry. He pins his body up against it, uh, just in case, because he's of, uh, well, he's of one mind. I'm of two minds. <laughs> Well, because uh, I know from out of character that uh, nuclear oh. explosions are about as bright as the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm of two minds. I'm not sure which one. But Venus is, only thinks sun. Is it is it rising from the proper position? Do you really know which way is the proper position? That's true, because I don't know these stars. <laughs> Is this only them who are rolling to notice this? Can tell us roll to notice it. <laughs> oh, it is not good. <laughs> Tolus would see it because he is in city. Um, okay. I, I guess it is um, the sun, so I mean. No, every, bright, everybody yeah. can, can roll to see it. Mm -hmm. well, well, you just said Tolus can, so I'm not going to roll for him. Cherry. Oh, sure. Or Titania. Just a... Yeah. People have no no problem seeing the dawn dawning sun on the horizon. Oh. Now I know that way is east. And I'm I'm guessing because because Cherry would know that is the correct way the sun should be. <laughs> See you now. Realistically, do you even you don't know what hemisphere you would be in? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it doesn't matter what hemisphere you're in. Wait, it always uh, rises in the east no, and sets in the west. 
<laughs> uh, I'm thinking of the angle. I'm re sorry. I have brain damage. It's been a long week. So it's only yeah. Wednesday, and it's been a long ass week. Holy as shit! As long as I know. Which okay, way, calm down. As long as I know which, as long as I know which way north is and which way south is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have brain some... damage. All right, you know what way the sun is rising. <laughs> um. <laughs> That said, we are making a lot of assumptions like what, that we are on a spherical planet and that it is also yeah, rotating in the rotate. same direction the Earth rotates. Yeah. I mean, you're not, but... You know, <laughs> so, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so... Group of four, because you're a little bit behind in the, the timeline of thing events. We're still on you. <laughs> Well, um, getting me out of here is going to be increasingly problematic the higher that gets. We could roll you up in a carpet. <laughs> Don't worry, I have strength nine now. I can carry you. How do you have strength nine? Azoth. <laughs> he, he switched to iron and now he has the passive add Azoth to strength. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's the fun one. Because I didn't know Iron did that. Okay, then. Then there's a add... hole into people now. There's also <laughs> one that allows him to add Azoth into stamina, I believe. So Yeah, there's one for stamina, resolve. I know there's those three, I'm pretty sure. So I can't remember if there's another one, but... I would prefer something a little bit better than a carpet, because a carpet would not actually protect me. How far is the RV from here? <laughs> Getting further by the minute. <laughs> they didn't move that far away. They like, moved this... it far enough that, the, that, it, that, they, that they wouldn't get covered by an avalanche and then stopped moving. At this point, Vetus actually kind of reaches into his pocket and pulls out his phone. Mm -hmm. he, he... Missed call from Tom's. <laughs> How long ago had it been? Has it been? Probably about an hour. <laughs> He's gonna hit dial back and call up Tallus. Okay, you're speaking to yourself again. Uh, I'm assuming Tallus answers though. So yeah. Uh, basically, v Tallis is just telling him everything that he's seen. I'm assuming, has the explosion happened yet? Because I'm pretty sure Tallis would have noticed the explosion behind him. First one has happened. Okay. So uh, it's just going to be a relaying of information. While you're on the phone call, the second one happens. And you don't need to be on the phone for to hear that one. Everybody else can hear that one echoing over. So Send out thunder counter, don't worry. <laughs> as um Vetus kinda hangs up the phone, he goes, Well that Wait, okay, now we've got a time paradox here. Hold on. Hooray! Do we? So Vetus ended up calling Tallis before Titania called Tallis. Is what is what it'll have to be. Then. Oh yeah. <laughs> God, I hate three separate groups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. So yeah, so I guess Titania calls Tolus after Vetus has. So, okay, so... Yeah. So uh, Vetus kind of just relays the information that he's aware of. And he goes, I hope that the RV is in the same location, but with the sounds of those explosions, I can't guarantee that. Which possibly means that we're stranded a little bit or well 
I'm stranded. You guys can honestly just walk away and do whatever. I will have to seek deeper cover. And with that, Vetus is actually going to turn and start looking for an entrance to a to a relatively intact building. Okay. Not takes a little bit of effort to find, you know, relatively intact. But you do find a building that you can blot out basically light. If you so choose to. That's what Vetus is going to start working on. Because he may not be feeling it yet, but he, he pretty certain that day sleep's going to hit him like a freight train soon. Okay. So the other three of you. Vetus has retired to a building. Is there a plan, or are we just going to stand outside the room and see if he falls asleep so you can, like, mess with him in his sleep or something? Draw on him. <laughs> um. We still need to look around. <laughs> we need to find what it is that we came for. Um. Well, the the whole point of fixing this god thing is to return things how they were, right? I'm pretty sure eternal night was not how it was supposed to be so in turning the day returning the day did we fix it are you saying we were looking for a metaphorical anchor not a physical one yes no i don't I'm, I'm not a... My friend would know all about anchors, so I don't. <laughs> I was under the impression that we were looking for devices or objects or things that were malfunctioning, that were holding the world together. That previously were holding the world together and now are not. Perhaps it was the heart of a Pangean. Perhaps in keeping it away from the interloper, as the great predator said, perhaps that uh, rectified situation. And getting rid of said interloper put things back how it was. If that's the case, then what we might need to do is go back because they seem to have been able to know the general direction and number of anchors that were not functioning. So they might know if we fixed one. I'll go back to the, the main village. Yeah. Unless anyone has anything pressing they still need to do in this city. Not me. I mean... I'd be happy to leave, but I probably should stick around just in case something happens to Vetus. Well, I'm not suggesting that we leave him behind. I just... You know, trying to figure out what our next step should be. I have an idea for that, but only if, you know, we're set on 
leaving. Well, so, is there anything keeping anyone here? If, if we if we assume our business has been conducted. I feel like we may be missing people, but <laughs> oh, maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sure we don't have everyone here standing <laughs> with us. I'm not saying we should leave them behind. I, well, like I said, I have uh, an idea for that. But again, we would have to be set on leaving. I, I can get us here out of here and regrouped with the rest I believe I can and with protections from the sun uh, that would have to be something done ahead of time if, well I can I can merge two places and move between them. It's kind of weird, I know. I've never done it before, but I think it'll work. <laughs> That's not inspiring a whole lot of confidence. Wait, how do you know you can do something if you've never done it before? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> that is the the wonders of the arcana. If you can think it, you can do it. <laughs> I know that's a little metagamey, but... <laughs> Meanwhile, Stahl is over there like... The way I drove up here... <laughs> I don't trust any magic anymore. <laughs> Stahl's just thinking about grabbing Vetus and hurling him through, through the air as fast as possible. I can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I have the capability. <laughs> How, how is Vetus? Is he... You were all worried about him, or he was worried about sleeping? Who are you talking Vetus is still sitting in the room. Is he... Prob I don't know what Vetus does to try to, like, calm himself, that he might burst into flames, but... Well, if he's in an he area not that he... not sleep yet. Yeah, honestly, he... He's not worried about bursting in flames. You said this area is pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're in the dark. Because so there's it, no electricity in this building anymore. It's more just either he's just going to sit there until he can reasonably say the sun's gone back down or day sleep takes him. Whichever comes first. <laughs> You know, Drew could probably sing you like a lullaby using his throat music, you know? <laughs> you guys aren't in the building, though. <laughs> Maybe we could go walk around and, and check on you. Open the door wide. <laughs> you open the door wide, you're just going to hear a shut the door. <laughs> shut the front door. So, I don't I, know further plans in this area. So I'm, I'm still a little interested in. You, you called them robots, but I mean, we have more important things that we need to take care of. So, wall for them discuss what they want to do next. Cherry. Uh -huh. And the NPCs, I suppose. After the demolition of this mountain sort of settles, uh -huh. the marching is quite apparent. Paulus probably said something about it to Titania. 
just bringing up the situation, but the small little army of robots and mechs now begin to march through this new mountain pass. Um, as... Nope, go on. Oh, it's just talking internally. Not much we should do about that. So, um... You hear Titania uh, actually begin to hum. Cherry would recognize it, but only just because it carries a fairly similar tune to the ants go marching. Oh, oh. I made Spencer go, what the hell is that song? <laughs> what? what? Whatever. <laughs> Cease That's questioning. Question. So. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah. <laughs> Hurrah. DMCA. <laughs> no, it's it's too old of a nursery rhyme. Pretty sure, yeah, that one's not going to stop. Someone will. I own that song. I actually wrote that. <laughs> Don't question it. All right, so. This host of war they continue their march, making no real attempt to stop or hail you or... Well, we're still driving. Are they moving fast enough to keep up with us even after our hit start? I think we, we pretty, much, pretty much when it stopped going down, I think we stopped driving because one, there was dust everywhere and two, and two, um, and two, um, it's for and to um, pretty much we don't want to get too far away just so the rest the rest of them can still see us from the entrance all right well then we watch them go marching by hurrah hurrah <laughs> yeah it's mostly just like we watch them go yeah I, I, I just I have to say it though because narratively it's happening and you're seeing it so I have to say it's happening. I mean I I guess I could just no, say they march past you, but I give that's people fair. time to interrupt, do things. That's so, fair. Again, continuing with the people moving past you, a few minutes after this group leaves and gets decent distance into the the plains the wolves come running back out after. Titania just kind of sighs. Are they mostly just not interacting with each other? The wolves break off in a different direction pretty quickly after getting out. Okay. Like, the robots... What they went straight the wolves they came out and immediately just banked right essentially okay it almost makes you wish you were back at home doesn't it Titania says that she kind of watches all the madness that's going on honestly no Cherry just says that home was much worse At this point, I kind of, uh, Titania's gonna kind of turn an eye on Cherry and try to read Cherry here. <laughs> oh boy. Ooh. See, I, I play with characters. I interact. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's... Good luck. I can't, I, I can't do it. 
<laughs> hey. Manipulation, subterfuge, and two extra dice because of because of Stoic. And then that's empathy plus wits. Wits, yeah. Okay. You use wits for everything. You know. <laughs> yeah, you use wits for a lot. Let's see here. I don't even think I've ever rolled or had to have someone roll resolve. Resolve is relevant a lot for um, a nope. lot of supernatural effects. She does not break stoic for you. I've never <laughs> seen someone roll streetwise. I, I don't know what streetwise is useful for, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's like survival, but in the city. Yeah. Yeah. She kind of just shrugs and takes Cherry at her word, and she goes, Pathetic home life you have, then. Mm. My, my home life is not the word that I would use. I was a tool. Okay, this is the... Can Cherry read people? Because this is the time for Cherry to read. <laughs> to uh, Tanya. Cherry? Uh, Cherry has a chance to... Um, okay, if it's witch... It's witch plus empathy. It's, Cherry has... Yeah, Cherry has a chance to, either, to read people. <laughs> okay, go ahead and give me that roll. I, I don't need to roll because she ain't even hiding the eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> No. It goes above <laughs> Cherry's head. <laughs> that Tanya kind of just shrugs and turns back to look at the new hole in the mountain. Uh, Tanya does not understand how deeply literal that statement was. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> she does, but she's very much a tool as well. Yeah, which is what you which is what went over <laughs> Rose's head or Cherry's head. Sorry. Yeah, fair enough. So, Mr. Mage Boy. Yes, Rose. Rose might be a problem that I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a plan or shall we time skip? Uh, it, it may be a bit of a time skip anyway, um, if I use ritual casting. But I, I could use collocation and basically move people from here to there. But, you know, it's going to be. If it's in the RV, they would need to, you know, shut windows for a uh, vampire. <laughs> if it's bright enough, anyway. I don't know, maybe the sun is blotted out with a dust storm. Yeah, we have no idea. We honestly can't go off of that information. Yeah, that's true. I'm sorry, Titania's not going to call Vetus with a sun update. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was... Calmer was going to ask Vetus if he could communicate with one of his children. I mean, Tallis kind of, or not Tallis, Vetus has, says, yeah, I have a phone. <laughs> that is. It's the I way people in modern times use smoke signals. Does that help your brain? That does help, yes. <laughs> okay, so that's how you communicate over long distance. Okay. Uh, if you could ask them if they're moving to stop moving for how long do I want to cast this? Do 60 minutes. It's only one dice. So that's fine. Ask them to stop moving until I need a unit of time. <laughs> That's a Neolithic unit of time. Until the sun gets there, oh, but you can't look at the sun. <laughs> this is very problematic. 
Ah, uh, yes, good old Neil the Thick Man. Uh, uh, Vetus just actually, can't. I'll, I will let you know when to communicate with them because it'll last long enough. All right. But actually, you should call ahead and have them, like, close things for you if that's going to be a problem. If they're in a position to do so. All right. Vetus is just going to call Titania. Titania would pick up her phone. She's not doing anything. <laughs> Relay this information, and then Titania would follow suit with making sure all blinds are drawn, you know, so on and so yeah, forth. Standard procedure. Uh, Alrighty, so... Uh, he, uh, Vetus kind of puts up a finger and goes, Though, I need to give you a bit of warning. My son is on his way here. On foot. Any, I... Idea when he'll get here if he knows where here is he's a good tracker he's capable at survival he knew that we were near the place where the wolf was fighting so assuming that he saw the wolf leave he has a general bearing on where to get okay I can I can hold the way open for a fair amount of time if he comes late, but at some point I'll have to close shut it down so to say turn it off we can only hope he makes it in time let's get this ball rolling I tire of this place okay Kalmir's gonna start the ritual pretty much right then in the room. So, let me finish this up. Throw some yantras up here. Throw some high speech gibberish. Wrong button. Death tool, dedicated tool. I'm going <laughs> I'm going to use Vetus as a Yantra because I need to. <laughs> For uh things sympathetic range outside of my sensory range. Basically something close to you that I can link to. Which your child will do. Touchstones, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially to Tanya, because she has beloved. Let's I think that would be representational sympathy would we'll throw that in. Okay, that'll be good. Alright, so it's gonna be one paradox die. Because I don't feel like spending the extra mana. I will contain it if it so happens to do that. Dice pool of twelve. Simple twelve. Oh. <laughs> well, didn't waste that hour. <laughs> so what wow. spell did you cast? It's called Co-Location Space 3. So I basically merge two locations into one. Uh, any mage with space can see the overlap. I can move myself, objects, or other people with the reflexive action between the two spaces. So basically I would, you know, touch someone and then I would pop them up in the next location. 